Good morning, true crime friends. Listen, um, this might have to be a quick video, but you know she's a little bit loquacious, so who knows if that's actually gonna happen. But um, it's it's raining in North Jersey, and it's not just like mm, it's a little rain. Isn't that cute? It's raining. There's a lot of rain, and uh, now water is coming out of my fireplace. I don't. I. I've, ne I've been in this house 20 years. I've never had that happen. I don't know what that means. Um, so I might be backstroking through here in just a minute um, while I go investigate. Today is Monday, December the 18th. And all the saints are president accounted for. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. We have the Golden Girls to call on in our time of need. Thank you, Brene. We have an official Leslie Jordan as a saint candle. Oh, I love it so, so much. Oh, my God. And, of course, we have, um, and thank you, Julie, for Leslie Jordan. And, of course, we have Tina. Look, Tina was a DIY job. I made her. But I showed y'all the other day in my little craft tutorial how I made this Tina Turner prayer candle. And if you missed that, then look at some of the old videos. I can't help you now. Look, I'm keeping an eye on the water as it comes out of the fireplace. I don't, I don't. Who do you call for that? I don't. I have no idea how to get that fixed. Um, anyway, I think a chimney cap has come off. But look, there's a lot happening in true crime. First of all, I spent the weekend listening to the Charlie Adelson tapes, and it is all the proof that I need that I have been living my life wrong. I just, mm-mm, mm-mm. My weekend, I, it was ill-spent. It was ill-spent. That is not what I should have been doing with my free time. Yes, I got some holiday shopping done. Joyous Yule. Um, happy whatever you celebrate, St. Lucy's Day. I don't know what y'all celebrate. I don't know your life. I'm just saying, whatever you celebrate, I hope it's happy and merry and you have a lot of carbs and spend some time with your family. But look, Charlie Adelson is out here on these phone calls. Oh, he's just doing the most. Here's the thing though, hang on. After you're convicted in the kind of case that he's convicted in, generally speaking, what happens is they put you on a 72, 72 or 73 hour hold in the don't on the live yourself wing. And so the lights never go off. Honestly, even for like terrible, terrible people, it sounds like mental torture. The lights never go off. Um, you're under 24 hour observation. The cell is clearly not clean because there's all kind of human waste of every variety that you can imagine all over everything. All he could do is uh, sit on his bed and talk on his phone. It sounds like mental torture, but he was trying to get out of there. And I was like, yeah, 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 I get it. Okay, fine. Here's the thing now. He told his mama on these phone calls all the facts and the details. Chief Mack is supposed to come by. They monitor you every day. They're looking at you on the camera. They make sure you're not upset. They're doing all the checking. And if you check out, then they'll let you out of there and you can go back to your regular pot. Oh, Charlie has made friends in the prison. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's been there for 19 months and he's like a, an easygoing guy. Honestly, I think he's going to do fine in prison. Is he going to be happy about it? No. Is he going to be sad that he doesn't get to see his child? Of course. Of course. But um, it's pretty clear from some of the things he said on the phones that he has not been living a full life since this unaliving. The guilt, the whatever, the ghost probably... He, he was not doing that good. He was anxious. He was nervous. He was all messed up. He already was in prison. And so in some ways, being in prison, I think might be a relief for him. But no, 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 no. Here's the thing. It's not his fault. It is not his fault. You know whose fault it is? Yours yours for judging him harshly it is your fault for listening to that podcast it is your fault for paying attention to him because um he was under the impression that he got one free murder and um he was he did not read the fine print on that in that um you could allow somebody if you want to but you're gonna do it in prison and your life is gonna be turned upside down and crazy he was not aware he's like the problem was the jury in Tallahassee. The problem was Wendy's book. The problem was this. The problem was that. And here's the thing. Um, I, what I needed was a jury of my peers. And he kept saying, yeah, you know, I, I needed white people. Charlie, Charlie, sir, you've now said the quiet part out loud. And um, that he's like, I need successful people. I needed people who made a lot of money, people who had fancy cars, and I needed white people. Sir, who were not in law enforcement because he was like, mm, I'm not about that law enforcement life. Um, I was like, dang, okay, 
Charlie, um, I know you know these calls are being recorded because your mama just went on the phone call I was listening to this morning and she's like, you know these calls are being recorded. Also, Danny told us there's an excellent chance that our home phone is tapped and your sister's home phone is tapped and everybody's phone is tapped. So watch what you say. I was like, oh, they was at least smart enough to know that. And so she was like, we are we are working on things and there's some there might be a jury thing happening. What jury thing y'all think is happening? He said, wait, 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 wait. He said, um, you know, the judge read a really good clean case because this was a high profile case and he didn't want it to come back on him. Did the light just go off? Am I blind? Hang on, what is did that light go off? Okay, anyway. Um child, squirrel. Anyway, so um he was like, so our chances of appeal are very, very slim, very slim. I was like, oh, he knows. Okay, cool, cool, cool. But then he was like, but what could happen is one of the jurors make a blog post about something that they saw in the jury room that they didn't really um, think was fair. or And so we will pick up that blog post and then we can take that and run with it. What? Sir, sir, I, hmm. Um, don't hurt your fingers grasping at all them straws because sir, you are delusional, delusional of the highest order. I'm not mad at you for being delusional, but I'm looking at you like my dog. Mm -mm. That's not how that's going to go down. And so in a way, it's a little bit surprising that when Donna got locked up, she wasn't like, oh, I know how this goes. Chief Mac comes by and everybody in Tallahatchie hates me and there are minorities here. So obviously I'm not going to get a fair trial because everybody is dumb. And Georgia Kappelman said y'all and therefore um, the world isn't fair. Uh, okay. She has a very interesting stance on things and I'm, I'm not that interested in it. Also, she's a terrible human being. So when um, Donna Adelson goes to prison for life, I will not be sad. I, mm -mm, mm -mm. Also, I kind of don't expect her to last that long. I don't, I don't, I don't. I don't think her mental capacity can stand up to it. There's one thing she said in these phone calls that was really, really striking to me. She said in the call I was listening to this morning while I was tidying up the house, she said um, she had been in touch with Bree, who was Charlie's baby's mama. And she was like, yeah, so I was giving her these books and blah, blah, blah. Because when I was teaching my boys to read, and I was like, her kids are good and grown. When she was teaching her boys to read, you know who she was talking about? Wendy's kids. She called their names. She was like, yeah, when I was... um." When I was teaching my boys to read, then blah, blah, blah. No, my kids to read. And then she went on talking. And I was like, and she, I was like, wait, she thinks of them as her kid. Look, I have a relative who was just like, oh, your child can call me mommy. No, he cannot. Uh, no, ma'am. No, 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 no. That's not going to be a thing. And I was like, oh, these people and their consp uh, conspiracy theories are next level. And so uh, Don and them also believe that Ruth and the Markels are behind all of this so that they could get the kids. What? They want to visit their grandchildren, not raise them. They're not crazy like you. Oh, listen, I'm in my 50s. I'd be doggone if I start all over raising somebody's kids. Look, so I drop a baby off here at my house and I'm going to be like, mm -mm, you, you need to, this is a safe haven state, isn't it? I'm going to need you to go to the fire department. I, no, no. I'm a grandma. I'm about that grandma life where you take the baby. Oh, he's so cute. Is he wet? Here you go, baby. Take your baby. Take your baby. I was never into babies like that. People be like, you want to see pictures of my baby? No. No, what are we going to do? Sit around and have drinks and chat? No, thank you. Those are things I like to do. Then me and your baby can nap together. Can your baby drink coffee? He can't? Okay, then you can take him on someplace. I send my, my grandchildren lovely, lovely gifts, and I do a finger wave to them on the FaceTime and go on with the rest of my day. I she want to raise these kids. She's like, I think the, the Markels, they just want the boys. Jay just want, no, they just want to have you to have not unalived their child. That's all they was asking for. That don't seem like that much to me. In other sociopath news, I was listening to the jail phone calls from Jamie Kamarowski. Do you know who Jamie Kamarowski is? Hang on for a second. Jamie Kamarowski is this heifer who was driving drunk and ran her car into the golf cart that unalived the bride on her wedding day. Now listen, this bride's mama is a hot ass mess. She's a ham. She's a H-A-M-A -A, hot ass mess. A mess. 
the bride, Samantha Miller Hutchinson, and I will call her Samantha Miller Hutchinson. Miller was her maiden name. Hutchinson was her married name. And her mama is like, um, I would like to get some of that insurance money, please. So I really don't think she was married. Don't use Hutchinson when you use her name. And to that mama, I say, mama, you are ham and you are garbage and you're going to hell with gasoline draws on. Well, you will never see your daughter again. But in other news, I mean, but related, Jamie Kamarowski, the girl who did the unfortunate unaliving, who was a sociopath and was driving too fast, drunk in her car. She's in her 20s. Girl, how you throw your whole life away? Look. I listened to the tape where she found out she was not getting bond. Oh, oh my goodness. It gave me a chuckle. It might have given me more than a chuckle. You remember the other day we talked about schadenfreude, joy at others' pain? I'm not about that schadenfreude life, but then sometimes something happens and you're like, mm, I can see the benefit of a little schadenfreude right here, right now. So Jamie finds out in court she's not getting bond. And so I saw the original videotape and she was just like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm sitting there quietly like, well, I'm sure my daddy-o, because she calls her daddy, daddy-o, I'm sure my daddy-o is going to come in and he's going to rescue me. And so I'm just going to sit here with a real dumb look on my face. And um, I'm sure daddy-o will get me out later. <laughs> Beyond the scenes in her, actual, in her actual jail phone calls, she's screaming and screaming and screaming. Screaming as though one of her loved ones were killed by a drunk driver on a golf cart on their wedding day screaming like you can't imagine no no and clearly like banging things and tantruming um i think there is like a mental health disorder happening here that young jamie may have been treating with alcohol and now is seriously untreated and this heifer is seriously unhinged not a little bit not a little bit she's not even close to the hinge she's far far from the hinge this heifer is unhinged Hinge. I was like, are they giving her medication? I don't, mm -mm. And so she's asked for a speedy trial. Ma'am, you mean a speedy going to jail? Because you going to jail. Oh, you going to jail. And she's just like, oh God, oh God. And she keeps talking about how, where was God when you was binge drinking and driving too fast in a 20 mile an hour zone? On a lot of people, ma'am. Something tells me she's had behavior issues for a long time. Um, this might have been her first drunk driving situation where she got caught. 100% it is not her first time driving drunk. 100%. It's, it's something happening over there. And her father was the only one able to calm her down. And you know how he calmed her down? The way you would calm down a toddler. He's like, baby, I'm going to get you a snack pack. I'm going to order you a snack pack. I ordered you a snack pack. And she was like, huh. Okay, okay, all right. Um, I, I, I want to help others. You, a, a snack pack, you say? Okay. What's wrong with her? It's, mm mm, ma'am, ma'am. It's something wrong with her. I don't. It's something real, real wrong with her. Like, yes, there was an unfortunate unaliving, but I'm just like, um, mm. She got some deep, deep, painful issues. Painful for me to watch. Although entertaining and good for my YouTube channel. Now listen. The other day, I made notes on um, Nesto because I was listening to Nesto phone calls. And uh, I, now I'm looking at these notes and I'm like, I don't know what most of this is referring to. So we're going to have to struggle through. I wrote CT baby mom. Child, I don't know what that means at all. I don't know I did. Was somebody in Connecticut? I don't. Who is? Okay, look, Nesto, who is Shirley Strawberry's husband, is on the phone all the time with his mistress, Sonia, who she says, she's like, I'm not a side piece. Um, it's clear that she was a, uh, a, a, a paid friend, if you know what I mean. There is another YouTube channel who calls her Sonia Side Chick Esquire Ho for Hire. Now, that, that title, that fits. That absolutely fits. So Sonia is over here um, babysitting somebody's child. And I was like, who lets up? Okay. I mean, listen, prostitutes need money too. So good for her. They're having a little side hustle. Hang on. No problem. She's not a good babysitter. You hear the baby crying in the background. It's like, okay, no, babies cry, whatever. You don't just hear this baby cry. You hear this baby. And so it's clear she takes the baby from wherever the baby is and puts it in another room and closes the door. You know, like how you do with a pet when you're on the phone? When I'm on the phone and my dogs are barking, I put them outside. That's what she did, only it was with a baby. 
a human baby. And we hear this baby fully melt down, scream, it's hysterical. Finally, she's like, I gotta go deal with this, hang on. This? You calling your grandbaby this? What? Um, the Nesto case is not an unaliving case. If I was the child of that, y'all know I am not into babies. But if you do that to my baby, it's going to be an unfortunate unalive. It's going to be a situation. And the police going to have to get caught. It's going to take actual Jesus and the law to get me off of your ass. If that's what you did to my child. I wish I had for what? What? Now listen, I liked my babies, not other people's babies. But I don't want to see anybody's baby be treated poorly the way she treated that child. I could not. I, I, it took me all the way out. Here's the other thing. Miss Sonia prides herself on being youthful and beautiful and whatever. So just so that you understand the picture, Miss Sonia's short. She's like four foot 11. She's teensy teensy. She weighs maybe 95 pounds. She's a skinny little thing. She has some health issues, so she can't keep her weight on. She can't eat. Too bad. She was shot up by her boyfriend years ago. Okay, fine. That's unfortunate. Um, her life has been nothing but drama. She has a lot of medical issues. So, okay, I get it. Also, she has big fake boobs. Fine. She pulls her hair back and she gets one of them store-bought store -bought ponytails. And then she puts on every filter in the world. Okay, cool. So, she, um, normally when you see her, she got a filter working. And I'm like, okay, good girl. Work that filter life. I'm probably like softened and, and whatever from this filter too. Praise God. I look, I'm like, I should rub some Vaseline on the lens or something. I just look younger and younger. Then she did a live, and you can see what she actually looked like. It wasn't good. It wasn't good. She's like, everyone thinks I'm so young. Girl, we have eyes. We have eyes. Um, I would imagine that men who want to compliment you tell you you look young. But here she is on her live. Her granny glasses down on the edge of her nose. Now nah, everybody thinks I'm I'm young. Um, yeah. What well, what do these comments say? I I, I can't read the comment. I'm, I'm struggling. I can't. Oh, I got. I had to put on my glasses. Uh, uh, girl, the skin, the the strain, the. Those implants are doing the Lord's work. This like that skinny stretch so tight across them. They look like they're going to burst forth. And I'm like, oh, look, gummy bears. Like, I don't know what's inside, inside in implants, but I, okay. I, I, Miss Sonia, I understand that you feel like your youthful appearance is your currency. It's not. It's, but who am I to judge her? Well, I am going to judge her because that is my job. And by job, I mean the hobby that I do here in the mornings before I go fold some laundry, go to the Walmart, do some meal prep and look after my children's. But look, um, she gave up a lot of Nesto's medical information. That meant, Child, you never heard of HIPAA? I was like, oh, but let me lean in because she's talking. Um, apparently, Mr. Nesto over there in the prison, he's having some health concerns. And I was like, first of all, maybe all that liquid Viagra he had stored in his truck when they picked him up, maybe that's what's messing him up. No, turns out he's in double kidney failure. His health is very bad. He's very weak. Oh, she gave up the whole game. I was like... <clears throat> Uh, Sonia Esquire Hole for Hire does not know about HIPAA. She she's she's not a medical professional, so she's not bound by HIPAA. She could just get on these on Beyonce's internet and tell God and all the world all of his medical situation. Oh, he has this wrong and he has that wrong, or we don't know what's gonna happen and he might not live. And Shirley really hasn't divorced him yet, and she never filed any paperwork, and so we don't know what's going on. P.S. They might not have even really been married because he never divorced his first wife that he was married to 32 years ago, and his son Dion calls him, and when Dion is talking to his father he's like daddy daddy i'm like oh that's so southern daddy it just cracked me up sound like a tyler perry movie to me but then he was just like um so what your baby mom has said wait 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 mm -mm. you were referring to this man's former wife as his baby's mom what sir that would make you the baby and you're like 40 i don't i don't i don't speak jail so maybe that's my fault. I, I should be maybe fluent, bilingual. I don't, I, all of these people are team too much. Also, I love every moment of it because I'm nosy and I'm messy. Yes, call me what you want, but I see myself. I know what I am. I can see the truth and I'm 
fine with it. I am absolutely fine with it. But what I need to be fine with is getting a mop and the wet dry back and possibly calling somebody who could recap the chimney. I don't, I hope it's just that one of the chimney caps came off. We have two and, and clearly, I, why did I supposed to come out your fireplace? I don't, it's too dark outside for me to even go check. I'm gonna have my son put the drone up so we can see what's happening up there. Cause something bad is happening on the roof. How was Santa Claus supposed to fly, slide down this chimney? Although it will be clean now that some rain has gone down. And I don't, I don't know what's happening. Look. I need to go on and take care of my chimney. I hope you go on and have a very good day. And, um, oh, like this video, subscribe to the channel. Did I say that? Also, if you want to know where to buy this, somebody was asking me over the weekend where to buy this mug. This mug has a QR code on the back, says gossip rumor and innuendo on the front. It's 22 delicious ounces of coffee. It does not come with coffee in it. You got to put the coffee in it yourself. But, um, if you look on the, uh, on any video, in the description box of any video I put up, it has the link to join. It has the link to buy merchandise where you can contact me, where you can send me a package over at the P.O. box. That's how I got my lovely compliment of prayer candles. We got, we, we fully prayed up now. We have all the good prayer candles. Um, I think that's all I wanted to say, child. It's probably something I forgot, but I can't deal with it right now. Y'all have a great day. I will see you next time. Bye.